Well, I'm George Dawes Green, and I'm a novelist and the founder of The Moth and The Unchained Tour. So George, tell us a little bit about what inspired this whole project. Well, a few years ago I was on a, a book tour. I'm a novelist, so I was driving around to little towns. Um, I went to some independent bookstores in the middle of nowhere in Georgia, and they just seemed so um, uh, noble that I I had an idea. I thought, you know, The Moth, which I s started 15 years ago, um, sells out every single time. Um, and I thought, maybe I can bring some of this moth excitement to independent bookstores. So I went and bought a 1972 Bluebird school bus and loaded it up with musicians and rock on tours and um, hit the road. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a big success, and it was thrilling for the rock on tours that were aboard. So um, my friend Wanda talked me into doing it again, and now we're doing it a third time. A tour of small southern towns as opposed to doing a nationwide tour or something on a, on a larger scale, or even bigger cities. Why, why Georgia? Why places like Asheville? Well, I think we haven't planned to go far away, say, to Texas or New Jersey, because I don't think the bus could make it that far. The bus is in Savannah, Georgia, and it's, you know, it's just a disaster. I, I, I can't believe that I bought this bus, and it, it breaks down regularly. It broke down um, the day before yesterday, twice. Um, it's broken down several times on every tour. It's eaten up five engines, it's clearly cursed. So I, so I don't want to take this particular bus um, very far, but we might get another bus because we're, we are getting requ requests from you know, all over the country. Um, people um, want us um, to come visit their towns and um, talk about how amazing independent bookstores are. Is there something about Southern culture that nurtures storytelling? Are Southerners better storytellers than, uh, than Yankees? I think probably because we lost, and so that always is, gives you something to talk about. I mean, I'm always telling people that the great stories are always about losing, and um, they're always told by people who think that they themselves are clowns. We often have celebrities come to the moth who tell stories, and their stories are about how they went into some situation and, and, and they were surrounded by, by clowns, and somehow or another they prevailed. But uh, brilliant raconteurs know that they're clowns themselves. It doesn't bother them. They're happy to recognize that they're human beings. And they're happy to talk about loss, because all good stories are about loss. And the South lost so much through its clownishness and idiocy. And I mean, slavery was just one of the great dumb ideas of all time. And so it's done one thing. It gives us lots of stories. Well, I find, too, that there's something about Southern descriptions of things that, that's very, so Southerners have a very descriptive way of um, saying things and that there are a lot of really great kind of Southern phrases. Do you have any favorite things like that? Like, for example, one of my favorite things, I collect things from Dallas because Dallas is from Georgia. I'm not from down here, but um, one of his great friends had a phrase where they said that they're nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Right. Is there anything, uh, any favorite phrases or any Southern thing? You know, when I grew up, I used to he hear those phrases all the time. They don't, they don't tend to pop up in conversation anymore. Have you noticed that the language has become um, drier over the years? And 
when they do, you can't really use them in stories because they sound like they've been concocted. They sound like somebody has memorized them. You know, when Robert Penn Warren, you know, was uh, writing his books and just throwing out those brilliant throwaway phrases, you really had the sense that in those days, people had a ready supply of them. But now when you hear those phrases, they always sound contrived. I mean, the world of language has changed. It's gotten so much simplified, and I think probably because of all this electronic media. Um, and it's not necessarily a good thing. But, but it's better to speak in a simple voice when you're telling a story than it is to sound inkhorn and literary. <laughs>